uh, second edition of the Minnesota Main Street presentation. Emily is going to go through the findings of the data um, that was put on this summer. And I think uh, if I could have your cooperation questions at the end, we'll leave time. And she is more than equipped to answer any questions. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> yes, uh, to answer any questions that you might have about the study and how it was done. Uh, we also want to thank the New Orleans Area Foundation. They're actually the ones that helped fund uh, the study and able to uh, do it this past summer. So thank you to them. Give if you can. Um, so with that, I think we'll I'll take it away. And she'll take it away. Yeah. Hello. So I realized earlier today I've been talking about this stuff all day with a number of different people. So I. I'm at that place where I don't know what I've said to which group yet. So if I all of a sudden say something that sounds like nothing I've said before, do interrupt me then and say, please explain this in depth a little bit more. Uh, but my name is Emily Karash Casey. I am the Rural Programs Coordinator for Rethos, uh, which is the brand new name of the Preservation Alliance of Minnesota. And we are the coordinating state entity for the uh, Main Street program in Minnesota. We have been working with New Alm for a number of years uh, with the Minnesota Main Street program. Uh, but this summer undertook some more in-depth study um, through funding through the New Alm Area Foundation um, with some additional funding uh, from the Minnesota Historical Society through the Clean Water Land and Legacy Amendment um, to really do some deep dives into um, what are the thoughts of the community's residents and workers about downtown New Ulm, what are some potential um, actions for New Ulm, and what are um, some considerations that could be um, taken into hand for the future of New Ulm as, as you're kind of in a place to begin to pivot. Um, I have a lot of data that I'm going to throw out today that is just kind of the tip of the iceberg of the information that we gathered. Um, we are creating a, about a 20-page written document that we will get to the Main Street Steering Committee um, and the folks at the Chamber, which they will then be able to put on their website or disperse as they would like to. Um, we've got just tons and tons of resources that rather than us put out, we'll give it to them and they'll be able to distribute it I'm, I know you talk maybe on your website or some other different yeah. means, but we want to make sure that this information is very useful and accessible to everybody in the community, folks at the city, folks at the chamber CVB. Um, so do know that um, if you have additional questions about some of the data in here at the end, feel free to ask because we, we have a lot more data than we're showing in here. We just can only say so much in a certain amount of time. So first and foremost, what is a downtown assessment? Why does it matter that, we, that you did it? Um, so we kind of take a step back from more typical survey work that has a question with A, B, C, D answer and somebody picks it. Um, we like to ask questions that are a little more open-ended that allow for more um, organic and thoughtful responses from the community that are not guided to a specific answer because it gives us a little bit more credible information to work with. Um, so really what we wanted from this downtown assessment is find out how New Alm's current residents are telling the story of New Alm and what they think about. Um, and when I say New Alm, I'm speaking specifically downtown New Alm for today's purposes. Um, and talking about what its character is and what makes it distinct or unique um, and vital as a part of the community. Um, so we take all of this information that we gather in a number of ways and we then, uh, using a lot of the information that we have through the National Main Street Center and through our other rural programs at Rethos, come up with cultural activation strategies which is just a big fancy way of here are some ideas that you could maybe try in your community to tackle some of these um, topics that are coming up from your residents. Um, they're, they're really meant to be able to help you evaluate what you've got in your community, um, help you be able to uh, take stock of what you have rather than focus on what you don't have or wish you had. Um, so it's, it's very much meant to be a practical and attainable resource for you to use in your community. Um, this is kind of the roadmap of what we're going to talk about this evening, go over the overview of how we got the input, where we got the input, what the input is, um, talk about what community priorities rose to the top from all of that input, uh, 
and then share some of the recommendations that we found from that data gathering, um, provide some information on some opportunities you could maybe take, um, and share some possible plans that we've seen work really well in other communities around the state, around the region, and in other uh, communities that are similar to New Ulm, um, even around the country. Um, and the last part of this, which is really um, a cool part that doesn't get as much time to talk about, is this uh, community asset map. And the asset map uh, defines things that, that are tangible, like places, so places like Turner Hall or a park or the Grand. Um, and it maps it and it tells the story of what's going on and we, we tap the frequency of how often those places get mentioned um, when we're talking to folks in the community. But we also include intangible things on that map. Um, one thing that is included that we'll talk about is cleanliness. How do you define that? What does that mean? But it is something that comes up over and over and over when we're talking to folks in New Ulm. Um, so that's kind of the overview of everything we're going to be talking about. Um, and I do, before we dive in any further, I do just want to take a moment to remind you that um, this is information that we gathered from people in the community, and this is their perception. Um, we know that so many of you in this room are working so hard and tackling really big challenges in your community on a daily basis, and sometimes it's, it's tricky to hear people's perceptions when you feel like the answers are there and it's very obvious. So we do um, just want to remind you to take things with a grain of salt, we're simply sharing perceptions and feedback that we got from folks in the community in a number of ways. What are those ways? Um, we started this process back in July uh, over Crazy Days weekend. We were here for three days. Um, we were also back in late September from Modenschau and also had a chance to do some focus groups, um, which I recognize some of your faces, so I'm glad you're back um, after that. Um, uh, we were back in December just doing more general info gathering, talking to folks. Um, but how else did we talk to people? We literally went up to people on the street and awkwardly started conversations with people at bars and bumped into people while they were shopping. And I mean, if you've seen those man on the street segments and like late night TV, that's totally what we were doing. And everyone was always a little confused at first. But we're really willing to talk to us after we introduced ourselves and, and let them know what we were doing. Um, after we got a lot of the big kind of just general surveying stuff, we would hear names rise to the top and realize, oh, maybe we should call this person and, and talk to them specifically and get their input. They seem to be a key player. Um, we would do a lot of emailing. Um, but uh, one place that we did get a lot of more valuable information than we were expecting was an online survey. Um, we tend not to get as much useful information from an online survey because they're very directed answers. People can choose from lists. Usually people don't fill in the blank very often. Um, to be quite frank, our online surveys are usually like the lowest counted part of when we do assessment work because we just don't get that valuable feedback. That was exactly the opposite in New Ulm. Um, so we were hoping for a couple hundred responses 561 people responded to the online survey. Um, and this, these 561 um, was in addition to conversations that we had one-on-one uh, -on -one in person with over 300 community members in downtown. Um, so we had, yeah? How were they selected to receive their initial request? What, what, can you? Uh, so we created a survey and they sent it out to a whole lot of media channels. I don't know all of the specifics in which they sent it out. One of them was newom.com. Um, they went out in the Tuesday email and was communicated that way. Um, and then there was pamphlets handed out in one of the, the events downtown. Yeah, it was a number of online and in-person ways. Um, um, I'll take this really quick, but then can we save questions till the end just because I know they're recording and I think that would be easier for them. Yes. Probably. I, we, so, so once we created the survey and turned it over to local staff, we didn't really monitor where it all got put, um, but we know it went out a whole lot of places. Um, so uh, these online responses were really great because in addition to the selected answers that we got from people, 
over half of the comments were very useful and people were adding paragraphs and paragraphs of additional thoughts and comments, which I'm not going to lie was a little overwhelming because we were not prepared to read that many comments, um, but it was incredibly useful and very unusual. I am going to walk through uh, about half of the survey questions just because they're very um, uh, important to give a, a kind of framework to some of the recommendations that we were able to come up with. So the first uh, question that's really relevant is how old are you? Um, looking at the population of who is paying attention and, and giving input to downtown. Um, it was about what we expected, um, but the highest percentage of people are 35 to 44, um, just a little bit higher than the 55 to 64 population, which frankly, we expected that to be flipped. We expected it to be folks who are nearing or already into retirement age who are paying attention, um, and that wasn't exactly the case. One of the first questions that we asked folks either in person and on the survey was, if you could describe downtown New Ulm in one word, what would it be? Um, you can see this word cloud puts a bunch of those out there. Um, again, we will be sharing this information with the chamber staff here that they will be able to share. So you can really dig into this deeply if this is something that's exciting for you. Um, but I do want to note that it's about a 50-50 split between positive and negative, which is still a win. Um, I, I think it's easy to get uh, a little downtrodden about feeling everything very negative, and that's not the perception coming in from the community. Um, this is one where the options were uh, selected, that they could choose an option. Uh, the top three issues facing downtown New Ulm. Uh, the, the very f highest response at just over 80% of the people, um, they could pick three options, and that is store variety. Um, the second being vacancies, also hovering around that 80% mark. And then the next two, three coming in are uh, parking, inconsistent store hours, and not being family friendly. Um, store variety and vacancies is something that's a little more challenging to tackle. It's easy to say, yeah, it'd be great to have a shoe store, but finding the right person to open a shoe store and having the funding to make it happen, that's trickier. Um, but talking about things like, what are some things we could do downtown to be more family friendly? That's something that is attainable that folks within your community can help tackle um, a little more easily. What day of the week do you typically go downtown? Uh, above and beyond is Saturday, um, which when you're looking at what is there for residents in, in downtown New Ulm, when are things open? When is it available to them? And if it is not at a time that they're able to come down and be there, how does that sync up with what you're, you're hoping for the future of your downtown? Uh, what time of day do you typically do your shopping? Not just downtown, just in general. Um, most folks, um, are in that 1 to 5 p.m. And the comments on this were, it's because that's when things are open and we have to get there. Uh, the preference is the 5 to 8 p.m. time period, though, when people are um, leaving work, on their way home, um, after school, that's the time that they would like to be out doing things, but often are unable to. Number one reason for going downtown, uh, restaurants. Second is shopping banking is close behind that. Um, this one I do want to point out as a really exciting thing because you are the envy of many, many downtowns in terms of your restaurant landscape. You have such a variety of restaurants and such active, excellent partners in the owners and managers of these restaurants that it is fantastic that you still have a place where people can go downtown and have more than one option to go and eat out at a restaurant. Um, I also want to note that um, having all of your banks have a presence in downtown is incredibly important. Um, there's plenty of places where those banks have pulled out of those historic buildings and they're just not there anymore. So the fact that your, your banking institutions feel it important to be not only still in downtown New Ulm, but building new buildings or renovating in the spaces that they're in is a really big deal and something to be very grateful for and celebrate. Okay, this next slide we included, not because we have exact recommendations on it, but that it surprised us so much. So we asked, would you live in downtown New Ulm if you could? The, it's hard to tell on this pie graph, but it was, like 27.9% of the people who took this survey said yes, they would, which 
we were expecting maybe 5% of the people to say, yeah, I'd live in downtown. That's a pretty big number. And if you're looking at having housing issues um, in your community and having a need for more housing, looking at upper floor downtown development could be a really cool potential for your downtown, especially as folks are maybe aging out of their bigger houses or you're getting young professionals into your community. We don't dive into this a lot. It was just a statistic that was surprising enough that we wanted to make sure we mentioned. This is another one that is very important to note as you're working with um, uh, you know, business recruitment, economic development work. Um, it's a little bit harder to say, hey, you, open this kind of store and it to happen. Um, men's clothing is, is really high up there on the list of a, a wished for thing in downtown. Saying it is something you want is easier than said than done. But this kind of data is really helpful for folks that are um, looking at wanting to open businesses in the community and knowing what kind of data there is behind uh, wishes. Uh, this is another uh, word cloud of where do people go when they go downtown. Um, Lamplighter, Lola, Inspired, all of the banks. Um, it's, it's just interesting to see that what's that one most frequent thing um, that pops up in, in uh, people's mind that they're going downtown for. Um, and I also, I mentioned it a little bit before, but the fact that regular citizens are aware of who owns these restaurants is a really big deal. The fact that they can say the owners of certain establishments by name and comment on how great of a support they are to the community, how much they give back to their town, is again, an unusual thing and really great. Um, again, this is another, hey, what kind of business would you like to see? Um, naming it a little more specifically. Um, a little trickier to immediately make happen. Uh, but we had, so I mentioned before, 285 people at the end of the survey give us just additional comments that could be completely open-ended. And that many people did, and it wasn't just a one-word answer, it was a paragraph of thoughts, and often including a, hey, thank you for asking us these questions. We really have a lot of ideas, and we would really love to be involved in downtown. We just don't know how to. We feel like there's a barrier. We have this excitement, but we don't know what to do with it. Um, and all of these lists of charts and responses, again, will be shared with the Main Street Steering Committee that they'll be able to share with folks and you can use as, as references as you're doing continuing work. So with all of this input that we got, we were able to comb through all of these comments, all of the conversations with folks on the street, and we identified some community priorities that came from recurring themes uh, in our conversations. Um, these recurring themes, which are also included in that community asset list, um, is that New Alma is historically German, but people don't have a specific definition of what that means. Um, it, it, they're not able to say, oh, it's just the architecture, or oh, it's just the festivals. It's a, well, we're historically German, but we can't really say why or what, other than we were formed by German ancestors. So there's a little bit of a gap there. Um, but they also are very fast to say how festival-centric this town is, that you guys do festivals like nobody else, which is very true. I live in Winona. We try to call ourselves the festival-like capital of Minnesota. We have nothing on you. We cannot even keep up. Um, but uh, being in the vein of festival-centric, also very tourist-friendly, realizing that tourism is an important part of the economy of downtown New Ulm, but with the feeling from residents that sometimes that's to the detriment of residents a little bit. Um, there is a, a feeling of resiliency that New Ulm has been able to bounce back from natural disasters, from fires, from you know uh, uh, recessions, things like that, and that there is a, a feeling of well, we'll figure it out, we'll make it happen. There's not a, a despair um, among the community members. Um, a, a huge, huge comment is that people didn't really know how to necessarily put words to is that they're coping with loss. There is a significant feeling of business loss in downtown right now, um, and it's very visible from uh, vacant storefronts. It is not uncommon for downtowns, but New Ulm has taken it, um, 
it sounds, it sounds silly to say they have taken it very personally, but I mean that in a good way. Um, New Alm has, we, um, I shared this story earlier that we were talking um, with some groups at the senior center and a woman there said to me, I should have just done a better job about it. Every time I needed to buy socks, I would have gone to her burgers and bought socks and maybe they would have been able to stay open which is an incredible mindset to have. The fact that your community takes supporting your local businesses that seriously is amazing, that they know it's on them. Saving the department store catastrophe across the United States is not something that they can do, but the fact that they are thinking it is on us to keep these places open, that's a, a big windfall. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit more in depth later. Um, cleanliness, being really proud of how your community looks, um, talking about the flower baskets in the summer. Um, we joked earlier that the biggest weed problem we saw were there were some rogue petunias coming up and cracks in the sidewalk. Like, that's adorable. <laughs> um, and there's a, a certainly a, a culture around eating and drinking, which is still very, very visible in the restaurant and bar culture in downtown. Um, and again, just to reiterate, the information, the themes, all of this came from our speaking to people, gathering information online, talking to specific folks in the community, and working with some of the focus groups. Um, some of the additional recurring comments that are very specific and not necessarily part of an overarching theme is that there's a, a desire for a grocery store in downtown New Alm, um, which we dove into that a little bit. Um, and that is not entirely true that there is no grocery store downtown, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, that there's a deep desire for things for kids and families to do. Um, especially at Crazy Days, we got a lot of feedback from parents saying, I'd like to take my kids, but I don't trust them and inspired to not knock over that Christmas tree, so I'm not going to bring them in there. Um, there is a deep desire for some easier ordinances around um, uh, not just the big festivals, but events for people in the community. So Thursday evening events, Saturday morning events, things for the community so that it's, it doesn't feel like they have to climb a mountain and jump through 25 hoops to make an event happen for residents. Um, and, and alcohol is certainly a part of that. But on the other hand, there's definitely a desire for more alcohol-free events that are a little more family friendly. Um, there was some confusion about what down, downtown meant. Um, people were confused of, is downtown just Minnesota Street? What are the boundaries? Do those boundaries matter? Um, and I, I think that is something that certainly can be um, considered a little bit more. Um, there's a lot of placing of responsibility on the city and chamber. Confusion about what the city does, what the chamber does. Is the chamber part of the city? Um, and just thinking that those entities should be the ones making everything happen and placing a lot of responsibility on, on those entities um, and not so much business owners. Um, there's a, a deep uh, desire to keep downtown New Ulm retail focused um, and, I, and even beyond retail but more experience focused that you can go in and do something and rather um, than having a storefront become a law office um, or a hair salon or something like that. There's a desire for it to be um, places where you can buy things or do things. Um, there is just a, a general lack of a, awareness. People felt like they didn't know what was going on, what was available to them, um, being surprised by certain store availabilities that were out there, and just feeling a, a deep lack of um, knowing where to get information about what was happening or what could happen or how they could become involved in downtown. Um, I'm gonna talk about this one last. Um, there's a, a desire for uh, better accessibility for the aging population who's facing mobility issues, but on that exact same side of the coin is the need for mobility issues for young families with strollers and little kids who can't walk across a street very fast and not feeling safe to cross a street with fast traffic that doesn't know where to stop. Or perhaps um, we live in a part of the country where it's dark at four o'clock for half of the year and is there good lighting to get from wherever you're shopping or eating back to your car? Um, I want to talk about this Oshlanders comment that we got a lot. Um, we were uh, 
prepared for it to be a bigger thing and it to be uh, uh, an ordeal that we were going to have to work through with people. And we found a distinct age split in people who um, identified and felt affected by the Auschlander comments and people who didn't. So people who are right around that age 50 mark definitely felt like there um, were hurdles to work through whether what, what, if they moved to New Ulm for somewhere else or if they moved back. Um, and once you started talking to people in their 40s and lower, they sometimes had never heard of that term and felt absolutely no issue with it whatsoever. In fact, we encountered a lot of people who moved to New Ulm just because they liked it here. Um, they maybe had some relatives here and this is where they wanted to raise their kids because your school systems and your parks are absolutely incredible. And they didn't feel like they were outsiders. Um, so that's an interesting generational split, um, not something that necessarily needs to be unpacked, but is definitely very informative. Um, the number one most frequent comment that we got, though, was do something about vacancies and deterioration. Um, nobody knows what, nobody knows how, just to like, ah, something's got to happen. Um, so. Before uh, we dive into the specific recommendations, I want to just take a minute to say these are just recommendations. They are ideas. They are not meant to be specific tasks. They're really just um, uh, a springboard for, for the future for planning, for the Main Street Committee, for the city, for commissions, um, to look at what could be possible in your community. Um, we don't really include it in this presentation, but in our longer document, we reference a lot of um, uh, st studies in other communities that could be compared to, that you could use for inspiration, um, and also resources that you can tap into so you're not starting from nothing, you're not recreating the wheel. You can call up you know, folks in Red Wing who've dealt with some similar issues and they are excited to help because the Main Street Network exists and is there for that very purpose. So, recommendations. Um, this is the whole list. I will talk about each of them individually. Um, opening the communication channels for folks. Consider residents first when planning for downtown. Reactivating the Main Street position. Create more outdoor public spaces. And give the community a chance to acknowledge and mourn the loss of longtime institutions and at the same time creatively think about the future. So, Communication, we'll dive in there first because that's often where the buck stops, right? Um, so when you see these assets utilized and these priorities addressed, these are specific assets that we were able to, to define in your community that are, are mapped and included on this asset map that we have for you. So when we're giving you recommendations, we're not pulling from, oh, this is a good idea, you should just do it. It's a, these, pieces have a lot of moving parts that already exist, and it wouldn't be too tricky to combine a couple things and make some next steps happen. Um, so uh, for opening the, the communication channels, here are some of the perceptions that uh, you're facing. There's a, a big lack of awareness about what um, events are available for folks, as well as what services and stores and businesses are in downtown. Um, if you're just going downtown after work and a lot is closed up and windows are dark, it's kind of hard to tell what's there. And sometimes, unfortunately, you have to spoon feed information to people and make it a little bit easier for them to find out what's going on. Um, and so finding a champion to tackle the, the information of what's going on in New Alm is something that could be really helpful. Um, Sometimes it's the radio station, sometimes it's a newspaper, sometimes it's a private individual who just runs an online blog site where everybody shares their information. Sometimes it's the chamber, sometimes it's the city. There's no perfect answer of what it has to be. We're um, just noticing that there is a deep desire for people to know what that one place is where they'll be able to find their information out. Um, 
there is a de and so with that desire for one stop info hub it's the resident info right like you want to know if there's a band playing at the bnl this weekend but you also want to know like oh has my garbage pickup changed because it's a holiday and that's going to affect me um, and just knowing where to get that information which is extremely different than somebody who is visiting new Ulm for the weekend wants to know right like they don't need to know garbage routes have changed because it's Labor Day, but they do want to know if that band is playing. So just being able to coordinate what's important for residents, what's important for tourists, and knowing that there is, there is a bit of a split. Um, it's also really important to note that um, if you plan a space for residents first, it's going to be exciting for tourists because tourists want to take advantage of exactly the same things that residents want to take advantage of, which we'll keep talking about. Um, there is a, a, a little bit of um, a gap in expectations of who is providing information. Um, there, I, I think it's just the change of like, what does the chamber do? What do newspapers do? Who has what information and who gives it out? And especially when you start dealing with places like newspapers and radio stations, what should be pay for? What is a public service? It just starts to get a little bit tricky and that's, there's no right answer, but it just involves community members having those conversations and being aware that, hey, there's a gap, how are we going to fill it? Um, some other possible actions that we're encouraging you to consider are um, exploring some diverse meeting space options. Um, we have a lot of folks who commented that they were really excited about the potential for downtown but didn't know how to get involved or felt like they weren't welcome um, at o official meetings is what what they would call them is official meetings I don't feel like it's my place to be there when ex actually people who are on those official committees are desperate for new energy and so excited to have new people on board um, so considering meeting at somewhere like Lola or Lamplighter and having a meeting that's happening out in the open so it doesn't feel secretive, um, so that it feels accessible for people, so that it's a space where they feel okay to walk in and, and join this and not know where they're not going. Um, and on that, that same note, considering things like partnering with Park and Rec to offer some childcare services or games so that adult parents who want to be involved can actually attend that meeting when they have kids at home and might not be able to get a babysitter. Um, even something as simple as, hey, every time there is this kind of meeting, there's always a pot of coffee on. Like, sometimes that's what it takes to get people in the door. But just being um, a little bit open-minded about how meetings are happening and how people are invited to those meetings. The comment came up earlier today is, how do we even let people know that things are happening? Right? Like, how do we get this information to people? Where are they getting it? Which um, I think kind of feeds into some of your, your earlier questions about how did the survey get shared? Um, and that, uh, too, leads into part of the question is, how are people getting information about meetings? How are we meeting them where they are at? Or are we asking them to navigate a website that is super tricky and complicated and you don't know how to find information? Our next recommendation is consider residents first when you're planning downtown. Um, there is such enthusiasm for downtown New Ulm. The amount of people who said, yes, I would be involved if there was a way for me to be involved was really exciting. We had two people say, I would just go paint that door if I knew what color they wanted it painted. Like, there are people who are ready and engaged and excited. Um, so it, it's not like you're pulling teeth to get people excited about downtown. They are there. They are ready about it. Um, but uh, they really do feel that downtown isn't for them. It's for the people who are visiting unless they have to quick run and do a quick errand and then they leave. Um, so there's a, there's a few, um, I don't want to say simple, but uh, imaginable options when you start to think about residents in downtown first. Uh, one comment we got a lot was, I work downtown, I have to move my car three times a day because all of the parking is two hour parking. And maybe considering some, uh, some new parking balances, we're not saying get rid of hourly parking, but consider certain lots in certain parts of downtown where 
this is where people who work in downtown get to park. Um, and then uh, right on Minnesota Street is just visitor traffic that's turning over throughout the day. Um, continuing the support for small businesses who are doing events for locals, there's a fantastic group of small business owners um, and s supporters in downtown who are just banding together and doing things, um, who uh, are often in communities butted against each other because they look at each other as competition. But in New Ulm, they know that more is more. Like, they know that working together is beneficial for them. And being able to continue that energy is really important. Um, they, uh, m those folks mentioned specifically at focus groups that when they're doing a lot of this planning and considering things for residents that are on a Thursday evening. So it's like a three hour event. You're not talking a, an all weekend, the um, w seemingly impassable uh, ordinances that they have to, to get through to make events happen are really tricky and makes it really not desirable to put on those events, which is exactly the events that the community is wanting to be at. Um, I know this fall when I was downtown during Modenschau, there were so many tickets that sold out right away and there was at least triple that amount of people downtown because they just wanted to be part of it. They didn't even care if they had tickets or not, which is really great. Um, doing some good evaluation and digging into some of the data we have, but even doing more further work within your communities about what actually is offered in downtown um, and how you can enhance it for locals. Uh, as you can see, people want to come down on Saturday. Are businesses actually open on Saturday? Are there things for them to do? Are there any special events or shopping specials happening when residents are coming downtown throughout the year and throughout the week? Um, one thing we really uh, are curious about is um, the comment that there's nowhere to get any groceries at all downtown. And there's a lovely little food co-op in downtown. Granted, it has some limited hours because it's volunteer and staff and, and it's not a full-fledged grocery store, but it has the beginnings of groceries in downtown New Ulm and how are residents being able to take advantage of that um, and, and how are businesses working together to share information in that capacity. And just thinking a little more creatively of, sure, you maybe don't have a high V in downtown, but there are... There are options for food in downtown. Um, uh, we were really excited about how uh, parks are planned in New Ulm. They're very well taken care of. They're very thoughtfully planned out. A great example is in the, the Germ it's German Park right by downtown. Um, in German Park where they're redoing the amphitheater and considering folks who have limited mobility and looking at the ways that people access that park and how they use it. And if you start to think of downtown as a unit, the way you think of a park, that helps to solve a lot of those issues. Um, you start thinking about how people are mobile in your downtown and you start thinking about how little kids use your park versus how uh, aging adults use your park and what different people are coming here for at different times of day. Simply by reframing it rather than looking at it as just a business district, but thinking of it more as a park instantly changes people's mindsets on how they move and use your downtown district. This next recommendation um, is has already flexed a little bit from this summer when we were doing a lot of this research because there's some been there's been some really good energy coming from volunteers um, and folks at the chamber. Um, so as I mentioned before, New Ulm has been a Main Street community for several years, uh, but there is so much untapped potential simply because prior to this there hadn't been a, a completely fully engaged group or director being able to take advantage of everything that the Main Street program in Minnesota through the National Main Street Center has to offer. Um, there is a plethora of information and resources and toolkits and how-to guides and planning materials that are at your fingertips. Um, there is so much to be said for having that one point person that's working in all things downtown. So events and business recruitment and streetscape planning that they're able to connect with folks in that district in such an incredible way. Um, and the infrastructure already exists. You have volunteers who are already at the ready. Um, it is 
such an easy, easy step that New Walm could take that could really just change the direction and the momentum of downtown really fast. Um, there's already uh, enthusiasm, as I mentioned, but being able to harness that and have one person capture that energy, energy and focus it into specific plans that come from you as a community, it, it can't be beat. I, there's, we, we were telling Michael earlier, we're just so excited to see the momentum that's already picked up in the last just six months in downtown that we feel like we almost needed to start the survey over because things are already different than they were in July. Um, next, excuse me. Creation of outdoor public spaces. Um, so there is already fantastic parks in New Alm. We're not saying tear down buildings and build a park. Um, there's fantastic outdoor space in New Alm that could lead to some really exciting cultural activation, but just new feelings about how outside downtown New Alm is for residents. Um, so we uh, really started tackling this idea of um, German heritage in New Alm, and what does that mean? And a lot of people were pointing to uh, certain um, architectural features on buildings or the way things are named, but that was where they were stopping because they couldn't really identify things other than um, some of the festivals, of course, certainly, um, very much having those German ties. But on a general week, what in New Alm is German? What what is that? Is that something you want to continue celebrating? Is that something you're excited, excited to embrace? And the answer was yes. People, people like that. It helps um, make New Alm unique, and there's ways to celebrate that heritage without just putting a facade on a building, right? Um, so by activating some of these outdoor spaces, there's really exciting opportunities to plug in features that kind of just amp up that that German vibe that New Alm desires. Um, so you're not, we're not talking about creating new public spaces in downtown. They already exist, and they're already lovely. So places like the Shanlau Park Pavilion, um, that beautiful lawn in front of the Kiesling House, you've got lovely green space and trees. There's that super cute corner with those, it's in that picture on Center Street with kids' little things and like a bench for parents to sit. There's all kinds of these little spaces for people to gather, but they're hidden. And sometimes people don't necessarily feel welcome to be in them if they feel hidden. So some simple signage or some bright paint is a really easy way to invite people in. Um, there's fantastic benches that co got put up um, through the Main Street program, those lovely picnic tables throughout downtown, just continuing the upkeep of those to help encourage people to keep being at those places. But con um, considering moving some of the picnic tables and benches into the Kiesling House Lawn or um, the uh, uh, Glockenspiel Pavilion area, spaces that are already prime territory for people to gather, but just need an invitation in. Wouldn't it be so much nicer in June when it's sunny and lovely to go and sit outside and eat your lunch on a lawn instead of staring at your computer screen for another hour? You don't need to do that. You need to go outside. And just inviting people who live and work in New Alm to be outside in New Alm and not necessarily just shopping or spending money. Just inviting them to enjoy the outdoors in your community. Um, a, a, another feature that you could consider adding to that, um, that many towns in Minnesota have success doing is having a special, like a food truck night. So one or two nights a month, um, there's food trucks and they're in front of the Kiesling House lawn and somebody's playing an accordion and people are just there or they can just show up and bring their own picnics and people just gather. Um, or uh, there's one day a month or a week where you have food vendors outside there and Lola's and another restaurant have their food for sale outside that people can just sit outside and be outside. Um, that they're encouraged to gather just to gather. That they're not coming for a specific event. Um, there could be music. You could have live musicians. You could just hook up a Bluetooth speaker and have some polka playing. Just something to encourage that 
gathering vibe of outside because when we really started to dig into talking about um, German culture, there's such a tradition of gathering and being together multi-generationally in outdoor spaces. Um, we talked a little bit about having that the, the polka music piped down the street outside of just the chamber, um, having it you know just throughout the whole downtown, enhancing that atmosphere. Um, uh, looking at moving the farmer's market downtown, um, embracing the market culture and, and bringing that into the downtown so that uh, workers can hit up the farmer's market on their way home, uh, just encouraging that flow between businesses and the farmer's market and back and forth, getting some of the makers in the community who I know we've seen at like, I forget the name of like the maker craft events that have happened, but um, having them as, as part of those as well, just to increase that feeling of this, this marketplace feeling where people are gathering. Um, and it can be as simple as um, people go to the farmer's market and maybe Lola's, ha or I say Lola's just because people talk about it all the time, but there's somebody out selling coffee and people can bring their lawn chairs and just sit and drink coffee together while the market is happening around them. Um, it doesn't have to be high cost infrastructure changes. It can be as simple as somebody just showing up with a guitar and hanging out with people. Um, we uh, know we had people questioning the fact that some of that seems impossible right now with certain ordinances that exist in New Alm. We're not trying to say do things or don't do things, um, but it's potentially a, a good opportunity to look at what ordinances exist. And if they haven't been updated since the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, that it could be time for a refresh and could be really helpful for folks who are trying to plan really cool things. <coughs> Excuse me for people in the community to make it a little easier for them, to make it a little more step by step. Um, we also want to call out that it could be important to seek some champions for some of these events. So um, there's clearly a desire uh, from within the community to be involved. Um, and there's also a perception that the chamber and the city just has to do everything to tackle it because that's just how it's done. And that doesn't have to be the case. It's, it could be a really cool opportunity to um, leverage some of the nonprofit groups in the community, to look at some of the clubs that exist, that um, there's chances for them to potentially do a Halloween trick-or-treating event outside in the street for kids, or somebody does something at Easter, or just find ways to empower different groups in the community to feel a part of what's happening downtown. Um, it doesn't just have to be the, the people who've always done it will continue to do it because that leads to burnout and is really scary. Um, I do want to say, so some of these pictures are, are not from New Alm, but they're all from Minnesota, from uh, Main Street communities. The only one that isn't is the St. Paul Outdoor German Market because I had to throw that in. But um, you can see uh, Shakopee, uh, their farmer's market is in their downtown and is tremendously successful. And that's where that farmer's market takes place. All right, one of our last recommendations before we get into just some general opportunities is giving the community a chance to acknowledge and mourn the loss of longtime institutions and brainstorm the future. Um, this is a tricky one. It takes some finesse but is something that is so much on the minds and hearts of residents and of New Alm that we really felt it was important to acknowledge it in some way. Um, so almost everyone we talked to mentioned a business that had closed. Herberger's first and foremost, it is the most recent, it is a big deal, um, but there were a lot of others that were mentioned as well. Um, in the same vein, I do want to point out that New Alm also has excellent success with, you have young business owners opening businesses, renovating buildings. You have some good succession businesses going on where uh, you have young business owners buying existing businesses from people who've run those businesses for a long time. It's easy to get downhearted when you see closings happening, but there is so much to be celebrated in downtown New Alm that is incredibly successful that Sometimes it's just hard to see the forest for the trees, right? Um, so here are some. Th these, these feel a little you know, fluffier 
as ideas, but could be really important for the future of what uh, downtown New Ulm looks like. Um, hosting a celebration of life for some of these businesses and institutions that have closed. Um, giving people a chance to say goodbye and share stories or share photos or just have this communal sense of, we all lost this and we're sad about it and it's okay to be sad together about it. Simply acknowledging it can help move past the point where everyone is only talking about the negativity of it and start to talk about what could the future hold for these spaces. Um, having a community forum focused on a particular building or a couple buildings, um, that is really truly a brainstorming session for the future. Um, as much as, as uh, recruitment opportunities through the EDA works, we also see businesses opening up in small town Minnesota that opened because somebody was home for Thanksgiving and they heard the right comment at the right time and they decided to move home and open a bakery. Or they decided to move home and take over the hardware store. Or they decided to move home and open up that boutique that they've always wanted to do. So by bringing those conversations back into the community, there's a higher chance for new business recruitment and development to open up. Um, posting an ideas board in an existing downtown business, so one of the banks, one of the boutiques, one of the restaurants, where people can just jot on sticky notes or write on the board what their ideas for this space might be. Um, there is a, I, I shared this one earlier, but there's a community in Alaska um, that had a, a uh, I can't remember what business it was, but a business long time closed. And there was a wall that had to get torn down because it was going to crumble. And they left paint out and they let the community for several weeks come up and paint their ideas of what this space could be on that wall. And they got some really incredible ideas for how to pivot that space for the future for that community. And something that was a big incredible loss turned into a, a pivot point that people could start to think about what the potential is. Um, considering uses outside the traditional model, department stores aren't coming back. <laughs> That's a thing that is so far beyond the borders of, of New Ulm that is just what it is now. So what are some new uses for this space? We know that New Ulm wants to stay <coughs> a retail and experience location, but are there things like indoor playgrounds or museums or we were joking earlier about axe throwing arcades? What are some things that people can go and do that go into some of these vacant spaces? Um, <clears throat> if you have a wall that really wants to come down, maybe put the axe throwing place in there and just say, take care of the demolition. Um, but having open um, and transparent information on things like zoning codes, um, rehabilitation requirements, that sort of thing, um, getting the information out there for people is what helps the, the pot to move and, and, and ideas to form a little bit more. If it feels like everything's happening in secret, people just stop thinking about it. And that's when things start to crumble because people just forget that it's something that needs to happen. Be, excuse me, needs to be taken care of. <coughs> um, this is more of an ongoing uh, a comment and, and is something that is certainly more in the hands of the powers that be, but being able to share publicly and regularly what progress is happening if there is any progress. Um, sometimes there are certainly things that have to, to be confidential, but if there's opportunities to say, we're still really hopeful, nothing has happened. If anybody has ideas, go talk to X person at City Hall. Um, and just keeping regular with updates about momentum or lack thereof is really important. And including that contact person when you're sharing that information. N having people know who to go to is extremely important. So we do want to just comment on a few opportunities that we um, didn't dive into how-tos quite as much, but were just topics that came up enough that we wanted to share some information on. Um, we went into the convening meetings where residents feel welcome, um, including amenities. That was a really big thing that could be beyond just city and chamber stuff. Um, that can go into nonprofits, it can go into boards, it can go into commissions, but just getting meetings out of places where people feel a little confused about where to go to 
Um, that's a, a big deal. How many of you felt a little weird coming here tonight? Did any of you go to door number three that was in like some storage thing up on that street like I did? Like, yeah, <laughs> I know you were there with me. <laughs> um, but but it's, it's a matter of making people feel safe enough to come to something so that they're safe enough to share their opinions. Um, activating and empowering volunteers beyond just Main Street. There is so much energy for changing the community, um, for the positive, and changing the narrative of it's dying, because it's not, that people are ready, willing, and able to tackle this. Um, reinvigorating New Alms tradition of music, especially polka. Um, so when we, I mean, we did a lot of online researching too, just to see what's out there about New Alm. And so many hits are on music in New Alm. You have a music hall of fame. They talk about the polka capital tradition. And that is um, not really apparent right now if you were just coming to New Alm outside of Oktoberfest. Uh, and that could be a really cool way to bring back that German vibe that you're looking for. Um, finding some new connections with Martin Luther College uh, and thinking of the students as residents and not visitors. Because you have students who are living here for four years who might like it enough to keep living here and raise their families here and be part of your community for a really long time. And considering how they're interacting with downtown, um, I won't lie, I didn't know there was a college here until I was here for this study in July. And I'd been to New Alm several times. So it's colleges are tricky. I live in a college town too. They need to be their own thing. But how are you inviting them into the community? Um, and embracing the, the farmer's market and food co-op in downtown. That is a deep desire in the community. How can you help to bolster these resources that are already there? I'm almost done. I know I've been talking a lot. I do want to just show you a few things about the community assets map because you'll be able to continue growing that in perpetuity. You'll be able to add to that forever. And it helps to influence um, if you're considering maybe opening a business somewhere or you want to host an event where people can come and go from multiple places, you're going to look where the energy is. And this map not only captures landmarks, but it tries to capture some of that um, intangible energy as well. Um, so w this is kind of the, the landing page. Uh, it's, it's GIS mapping. Your city planners and zoners are super familiar with it. Um, but it just has a list of all these landmarks. Um, and we do break the, the landmarks into several categories. Restaurants and bars, retail, um, arts, events, and community spaces. Um, we also then have a tab that's this intangible cultural asset that comes up a lot. So the Germanness, the cleanliness, those things that you can't really put on a map, but are very much an asset to the community. Um, and former icons, because that is something that is part of the, the jargon in New Alm enough that we felt that it was important to include on this asset map. Um, so what you can do is zone in on these specific spots. And again, I want to reiterate that we focused on downtown. We know there's a lot more in New Alm, but we're focusing on the downtown district because that's the only downtown you've got. Um, so you can focus in on these individual spaces. You can then click on those places, and we have stories that we gathered from talking to people, um, from talking to the business owners. We include history of places. We talk about if there's, you know, was there ever a fire? Is there some like illicit story that goes with this building? We included those things. We we want it to be part of the cultural narrative. Um, it just, as you can see, is super in depth. Uh, one place that did get included that we honestly thought was downtown is Turner Hall. People refer to Turner Hall like it's downtown, and um, we were surprised when it wasn't like around the corner from the chamber <laughs> that was up the hill a little bit, <laughs> um, which is great. And frankly, if people kind of consider it downtown, great. I don't think that's hurting anything. Um, but you can see that this goes pretty in depth and can be a really cool launching point um, uh, for future. Uh, planning considerations when you're looking at stuff. Okay, I know that was a lot of information packed in, but do folks have any questions that I can answer for you? 
And again, just to share, we will be giving all of this information to Michael and the folks at the chamber. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Right. Yeah, we we talked about that uh, as well. Um, I'll give you an example that I, I you know didn't realize until after the fact that it happened. Uh, if we look at Jeff's Oktoberfest and we're trying to find volunteers, the only people we asked were chamber members. We never asked private nonprofit organizations. We didn't ask. Um, the soccer team, we didn't ask any, anyone else. So we have to find a way to be more inclusive uh, with organizations that are not attached to the chamber. And I've, I've said that openly many, many times. Um, there are business owners that I went to visit that are not chamber members, and it's not because I'm gonna spend tons of time with them and thank them for not being a member. I'm there because they're also an asset of the community, and we have to learn um, that they, they can be part of some of the solutions that we need. So yeah, absolutely, the steering committee needs to grow and continue to grow. And on that note, you had over 500 people, and um, I anticipate, we also had people try to take the survey after it was closed, so <laughs> wow <laughs> is what I have to say to that. Um, but I mean, it could be as simple as um, somebody deciding to be the person who's going to get this mailing list together, that if you could get 561 people to take 15 minutes to take a survey, you'll probably get them to share their email if they're interested in volunteering and things around town. So whatever sources got used to share that, that survey could certainly be nabbed again. And what's really interesting was that within the last three months, um, and I don't spend all my time at the chamber, but within the last three months, there has been multiple people that come to the chamber and say, hey, do you have a list of organizations that I can volunteer for? And we don't have one. Yeah. We have a list of nonprofits, but I don't know which ones actually need volunteers. Yeah. So I think it's definitely a gap. Yeah. From the uh, survey, were there enough people to get your name and email address? Um, we, I'm going to have to go back in. That because we're gathering this information in such a different capacity, some of our privacy restrictions don't allow it. We have some emails which we will share. It's just not a comprehensive list. If we do this again, Michael, can you put in a, if you're going to ping them through the chamber, why not put an option and have people Yeah, I will be really honest. I just want to say that um, we've never had public input success anywhere like we had here, like anywhere. So we just were so surprised that it, it could have been a cool resource that we didn't. We had no idea it could have worked. Yeah. Stephen and I are working on on some things. Right. Um, so, Michael, to that end, is there a way in this presentation for you to, to put a graphic that says contact yep. Michael J. Lewis or Chamber at this number or this email address? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a great idea. Great idea. Great idea. Yes. The previous screen where you were. Um, this one? Yeah. Um, Explore, click on, and read up the short the answer is no, because it only lives within our GIS mapping service right now. We have an appointment set up. So this is the one thing that's a little more technical and tricky, because we have to turn over GIS mapping allowances to the licensed person, which it exists in New Alm. It's just a matter of transferring the licensing. So within a couple of weeks, that, that will be. be like yes. I'm not sure where you said you'll this. you'll. Yeah, we're hoping to create a new page just for all this information. 
Um, not only this data. Well, especially this particular one that's interactive. Yep. That's yeah. Absolutely. So it give us a little bit on this one. This is the one thing that requires technical allowances and license and blah, blah, you know, all of that fun stuff. And but you will have full access to that. The second part of that, uh, kind of like with the whole Wikipedia thing, for those of us who are business owners and live in downtown Duval, it gives a way of saying, oh, that was great, you got all this information, but a lot of it's wrong. Would you like to have it fixed? Um, you can. We were getting stories. So if those stories are incorrect, that's okay. You know, that's how it is sometimes. You have, people's memories are different than facts sometimes. And so this being a story map, we know that it's not this is the exact date of this thing and this place and all of this stuff. It's more about the stories and the narratives that people share than, um, than historical data. <laughs> we, we would be careful, we want to be careful about people using this as like something for a term paper. This is about the stories. It's about the stories and the characteristics of the community. That's a really good point. Thank you for bringing that up. Are there any council members that are on your email list? Yes, there are. And Chris Dalton uh, has come the last couple times. I, and I wanted to point out too that this is not the only study that we've completed uh, within this past year. We also did um, the EDC, the EDA, and the Chamber uh, paid retail strategies um, to, it's, it's a company down south, to really give us a lot of analytical data on um, what restaurants and, and clothing shops people are leaving the town to go and shop in other locations like Mankato. And so, when we bump these two reports together, they complement each other almost tit for tat. They're, they're very similar, except one looks at GIS mapping of you know, your cell phone pings and, and that kind of information, and this is looking at qualitative storytelling. Hey, we went out and reached out to the community. And it's really interesting because uh, when you look at retail strategies, they said that um, I think there was $24 million going out of the community buying clothing. And the top thing that people talked about is what? Clothing and shopping experiences and variety of downtown. So those two things definitely meet up. And the other thing I wanna say is, um, when we have people come to the chamber, they're asking for this kind of information and we've never had it before. When um, the ice cream store that has already announced that they're coming here, actually reached out a couple months ago, they said, we really want to prove to our investors that New Alm wants yeah. this and now we can. information. And now we can, Yeah, because we have that story. Anything else? Well, thank you so much. Again, I want to reiterate, thank you for sharing your time. A lot of you spent a lot of time getting the word out about this, encouraging people to talk to these two crazy women who are approaching them at bars and asking them weird personal questions. Um, but do be on the lookout. I know they'll be sharing all of this information soon. We wrap it up in a nice, pretty little bow, and we'll send it out the door soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.